Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the four shape modes that are found on the Pathfinder panel in Adobe Illustrator. Now, you may have seen these tools before, and you may have even used them. But in this video, not only are you going to learn how to use them, but I'm going to show you a very simple keyboard shortcut that you can use with each one of them to allow you to create a compound shape that you can edit over and over again. So let's get started. First, let's look and see where we can find the tools. When I look over at the Properties panel, the Pathfinder tools are not there, and that's because the Properties panel changes based upon what you can do with what you have selected on your artboard. So watch what happens when I select two objects on my artboard. All of a sudden, I have access to my Pathfinder panel. Now, I'm not seeing all of it. I'm only seeing these four tools, which we're going to be talking about in this video. If I want to see the rest of them, I click on this little ellipsis, and I see not only the shape modes, but the Pathfinders. And we'll talk about those in a future video. I'll click here to close that out, and I want to show you the other way to open the Pathfinder panel is to go up to Window, Down to Pathfinder, click here, and this is going to give you a free-floating Pathfinder panel. You can also click on the tab and dock it next to the Layers panel, and then you have access to the entire group whenever you want them, or they're still going to be here in the Properties panel. Okay, I have my first two squares selected, and notice that the yellow square is on top of the blue square. When I click on the Unite Shape Mode icon, what I'm expecting is for these two squares to become one. So let's click here, and Illustrator has created one object out of the two squares, and it has given the new object the color of the top layer that we had on the artboard. And I come down and select the next two squares. Now we're going to use the Unite Shape Mode icon again, but this time I'm going to hold down the Option key. And when I do, Illustrator is going to create an object that looks very similar to what it created without the Option key, but there's one major difference. You can see that even though Illustrator did change the color of this back layer, both of my squares still have maintained their individual shapes. And let me show you what happens if I get the Direct Selection tool, Keyboard Shortcut A, and then I click on one of the squares. I'm able to move it around wherever I want. I'll select this one, and I'll move that here, and I can move these around anywhere that I want. And then when I'm finished, I'll come back and get the Selection tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, and I have a new shape, and I can move it around, and it sticks together just like this object is going to stick together. All right, let's move to Minus Front. When I select these two squares and I use the Minus Front Shape mode, I'm expecting for Illustrator to remove the top layer and any part of the layer beneath it that is overlapping. So let's see how that works. I'll come over here and click the second icon. And sure enough, what I'm left with is the part of the back layer which was not overlapped by the front layer. And notice that this back layer maintained its own color. All right, let's come down and select these two squares. I'll hold the Option key down and click on the second icon, which is the click to minus the front. And we're left with the exact same shape that we have up here. However, we still have our yellow square, and we still have this part of the blue square. And all we have to do is click on the artboard to deselect it. Can't tell any difference here, but when I get the Direct Selection tool, Keyboard Shortcut A, and I come over here, I'm going to be able to move any part of this compound shape wherever I want it. And when I'm finished, I'll click on the artboard to deselect it. I'll get the Selection tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, and I still have this blue color, and I could go back and edit this even more. 
Okay, let's move to the next one. I'm going to select these squares. And when I use the intersect shape mode, what I'm expecting for Illustrator to do is remove any part of these shapes that are not overlapping. It's looking for the intersection of the two. So I'm going to come over and click on the third icon. And here we have the intersection of my two squares. Now let's come down and select these two squares at the bottom, hold down the Option key, and see what happens when we press the intersect shape mode here. And again, we're left with what appears to be the same exact square, but if I get the direct selection tool, keyboard shortcut A, and I move this around, I'm able to get all sorts of different shapes. So this is still editable when I use the direct selection tool. I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and I'll come over and select these two squares. Now when we use the exclude shape mode, we're expecting the exact opposite of the intersect shape mode. We're expecting Illustrator to exclude the part that is intersecting and to keep all of the rest. Now we have the yellow on top and the blue on bottom. When I come over and I click on this fourth icon, Illustrator has changed the back layer to yellow and we have this object which moves around all together. Now I'll select our bottom two squares here and I'll hold down the Option key and click on Exclude again and Illustrator changed the color and yet we still have some ability to edit this. I'll click on the artboard to deselect it, get the Direct Selection tool, keyboard shortcut A, and I'm going to click on this square and move it around and you can see that I have maintained all sorts of ability to continue to edit these two shapes. If you have trouble remembering which of the shape modes do what function, just look at their icons. The black part represents the part that's going to be kept when you use the tool and the white part represents what's going to be taken away. Now let's look at one other thing. I'm going to select these bottom objects here, and we're going to delete these. I'm going to move to the Layers panel, and I'll open up another set of squares. I want to show you that sometimes you may just want to use the Shape Builder tool, because in many instances you're going to be able to come up with the same results. So for the first one here, let's select these two objects. Yellow's on top, blue is on the bottom, and I'm going to get the Shape Builder tool, keyboard shortcut Shift M, and what I want to do is unite these two objects so I'll hold down my mouse and drag from one to the other, and Illustrator has created one individual object, which is a combination of the two squares that we started with, and we've ended up with the yellow color, which was the top color. All right, let's select these next two squares. So we want to get rid of the top layer and anything that the top layer is overlapping on the next layer down. I'll get the Shape Builder tool, keyboard shortcut Shift M, and this time I'm not going to unite things. I'm going to remove them. So I hold down the Option key and I'll drag my mouse over the parts that I don't want, and then I'll get the Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, and here's what I'm left with. Very similar to what we have in the first example. Let's select these squares here. I'll get the Shape Builder Tool, Keyboard Shortcut Shift M, and I want to keep just what is intersecting on these two layers. I'll hold down the Option key and I'm going to click and drag over the parts that I don't want, and I'll get the Selection Tool, Keyboard Shortcut V, and you can see I'm left with exactly the same shape as I was in the beginning here. And for the last one, I'll select these two squares. Now the yellow's on top, blue's on the bottom. I'll get the Shape Builder tool, keyboard shortcut Shift M, and I want to exclude any intersecting parts. I'll hold down the Option key and click here, and 
then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and click on the artboard. The difference here is that the bottom layer has maintained the blue color. And this is one of the few times where when you use the Shape Builder tool, you're not going to get the same results as with one of the shape modes. It turns out a little bit different, and that's because Illustrator does not change the color of the bottom layer. So now you know how to use the four shape mode tools to create new shapes from old shapes. And you even know how to make compound shapes, which allow you to continue the editing process as many times as you want. I've also compared these to the shape builder tool, which can accomplish almost exactly the same results. And you just need to decide which ones are easier for you to remember and what are you going to use. In a future tutorial, I'll be talking about the other six pathfinders that are on the pathfinder panel. And one of the tools is a tool I can't live without. So be sure and subscribe to my channel now so you don't miss that tutorial or any of my future training. And I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.